Hey friends, it's Ryan here, and we're back with another Level 099 video to teach you all that stuff that you've only been pretending to understand in the conference room. Today we're going to talk about GRIP. GRIP is a search tool, but unlike Find, we're not searching for file names, we're searching file contents. And in Linux, nearly everything is a file, so it makes this a very powerful tool. We can find almost anything using GRIP. And you're not limited to Linux here. Because with Windows Subsystem for Linux, you can enjoy these same exact commands on Windows. And for those of you with mental disabilities, Mac OS Terminal app will also let you use GRIP. I'm going to use WSL for my demos here. And the basic syntax for GRIP is pretty simple. It's just the word GRIP, then any modifiers that you might need, and then the text that you want to search for, and finally, the target of your text. The target of your text is usually a file, although it can also be a directory in some cases and you can even use wildcard targets. In our example here, the dash I modifier denotes case insensitive. Now by default, grep will match case. So let's look at how this would work if you didn't match case by looking at the file contents. Dash I is actually something that gets used a lot, at least in my grips, because usually your data is not gonna be reliably cased. Now as somebody who's a beginner to Linux or uses it infrequently, one of the best real world uses of grip is to search your history. So it's not uncommon to need to use the command line to install some obscure drivers or install things from a package manager. And if you don't do that every day, it's easy to forget the exact syntax of what you're doing. But by piping the standard output of your history into a grip search, you can easily track down those past commands that you did months ago without scrolling endlessly through your history. Now note that when we're passing standard output to grep, we don't need to specify target. Grep knows that the standard output is the target. If you don't understand standard output and what's going on here, don't worry because we got you covered with another 099 video that will teach you about that. You can pipe anything that outputs standard output to grep. You can even pipe the man page for grep into grep while searching for grep. Now I use history search a lot on my media server when running YouTube DL or FFmpeg commands. Both of those programs have some long commands with a lot of modifiers and a lot of things that can be different when you use them on different sites or different CDNs, maybe used for audio, maybe used for video. Using wildcards, I can go back through my history and search for specific domains to see what YouTube DL syntax I need to use for that domain in case I haven't used it in a while. Also note that there's a wildcard here, but this isn't quite the same as a wildcard that you're used to seeing on your command line. This wildcard is using regular expressions, and regular expressions are maybe the most powerful tool that you can use when using grip. I'm not going to tell you how to use regular expressions in this video, but you should definitely check that out more to get a better understanding of it. Uh, let's say you have customer data and flat files, and you need to find everyone at a certain street name, but any street number, and the zip codes even change on that same street, which sounds wild, but there's a real world example. And your zip codes need to match the first two digits. Now that's a crazy request. That would be easy to do with uh, SQL or something like that. But in a file system, how are you gonna do it? Well, it turns out grep can do it fairly easily using regular expressions. Now you've seen the dash I modifier, and like I said, you are gonna get some nasty data in the real world. It's never gonna be perfectly cased. It's never gonna be perfectly formatted. Basically the only data you get out there in the real world, in the streets, is bad data. So dash I is really helpful. I use it almost all the time. And another really super useful modifier is the dash R or the recursive grip search. Recursive search will dig into every subdirectory of your target directory and search the whole tree from that point for whatever you're looking for. This is massively useful when you can see the result of something, but you can't find the code that is causing that thing, such as uh, you know looking at output on a web page, or if you're getting error output in a program you've written or that somebody else has written, and you want to find, hey, what's outputting this error? You can often grip for the actual words in that error, and find where in the program it's being thrown. If you're a developer, someday you will probably be tasked with taking over someone else's broken project and grip will be indispensable for finding stuff like that when you find yourself in that situation. 
Another great example of where recursive grip is really useful is when you're working with aggregated JavaScript or CSS and you only see the big file, the big aggregated file, and you need to search through all the little individual files. Next up for useful modifiers, we have the dash V modifier. The dash V modifier is inverse. So this returns the inverse of what you're searching for. So a real world example here is imagine that you have some logging going on and you're logging all of the IP addresses and timestamps of who accesses your server. And you know the IP addresses that should be accessing your server. So using grep inverse, you can do a quick search for any IP address that is not the IP addresses that you were expecting. And thus you can see any intrusions that might be happening in your server. But wait, I hear you cry out. You didn't introduce the dash E modifier there and you've used it already. That's right. I used it before I introduced it to tease it early and pique your interest and therefore make it easier for you to remember. There's no need to thank me. It was my pleasure. The dash E modifier is one of several ways of denoting an OR condition in your grep command. So you can do logic in grep commands. This is the most readable, but there's also some shorthand. I'll let you look that up on your own. You might also see commands like egrep and fgrep, but those commands are actually mostly deprecated now. So you'll see them a lot if you're doing Googling about grep, but you shouldn't use them. You should get used to using the modifiers because like I say, they're deprecated. They might take them out someday. Now we're almost at the end of this 099 journey. I just want to introduce one more thing because or isn't the only logic that we can do. Of course, you've already seen dot dash V, which is not. So you have or and not. But what about and? Well, and is actually quite easy to obtain in grip just by daisy chaining your grips into and piping them into other grips. Now, again, if you don't understand standard input, standard output. Follow the link to the other 099 video and you'll get even smarter today, which you probably weren't expecting. Now there's a lot more to grep and it can be even more useful than this, but this is level 099. And with that, we're getting solidly into level 100 territory and you are becoming a grep star. And when you're a star, you can just walk up and grip them by the file system. So get out there and start gripping today. Oh.